good all of the time. And all of the time, God is good. <laughs> Will you join in our first hymn found on page 391 in the new church hymnal? Amazing Grace, and we'll sing verses 1 and 3.
Will you join in the congregational prayer as we pray together? Most awesome God, God you are so good all the time. Forgive us for grumbling when life does not go in the time frame that we want or in the way we think it should go. Quiet our spirits and open our eyes to your divine words and the pieces that you are putting together. Remind us that you are constantly in control working all things out for your glory and for those who love you. Thank you for never leaving or forsaking us. Thank you for holding us tight when we are in those moments of waiting. Proverbs 18, 16 reads, A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great God. God knows the power of a gift. That's why he didn't institute a church tax. He wanted every gift to be given from one's own free will so that when the blessings come, we understand how God worked through our gift to prosper for our well-being. You have a moment of opportunity to be ushered into the presence of God by giving to Him as He so graciously has given to us. So will you enter now into the presence of God by worshiping with your offering? Will the deacons come forward? Give me a drink. Did you hear me? That's bad, huh? What? You, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan, and a woman. I'm sorry. I should have said please. 
You know, it's not safe for you to be alone out here. Nor you. Why haven't you come with others? And why so late in the day? Don't women come to the wells in the, the cool of the morning? Yeah, well, none of them will be seen with me, so I have to come at noon in the heat, as you have so kindly reminded me. Why won't they be seen with you? Long story. I, I'd still like a drink of water if you can spare it. Amazing what a parched throat will do. Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? Maybe some of my people say that about your women, but I don't. Yeah? And what do you say? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? And I would give you living water. Would. Except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. Besides, what do you need from me if you have your own supply of living water? Long story. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? I know, Jacob. And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband and come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a prophet. You're here to preach at me. No. Usually the one good thing about coming here alone is I can escape being condemned. I'm not here to condemn you. I've made mistakes. Too many. But it's men like you who have made it impossible for me to do anything about it. How? Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. They say that because the temple is there. Yeah. Exactly where we're not allowed. I'm here to break those barriers. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So, where am I supposed to go when I need God? I've never received anything from God, but I couldn't thank Him even if I did. Anywhere. God is spirit. And the time is coming and is now here. That it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? <laughs> Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sorts this mess out, including me. I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. But he wasn't a good man. He hurt you. And it made you question marriage and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And to this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. 
You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? <laughs> I am rejected by others. I know. But not by the Messiah. <sighs> and you know these things. Because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon. Just the heart. <laughs> you promise. I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> hey, wait! Your water! You forgot your um. Foxy, a man who told me everything I ever did! <laughs> um. Rabbi, we got food. What would you like? Ah, I have food to eat that you do not know about. Who got you food? Well, today you guys are in for a treat. Mr. Alex Conway is a young man that we've been guardians for for, he said, like 13 years. And he plays the guitar and plays the drums and sings. All sorts of stuff, and he is going to sing some songs for you today. And this first song is Make Me a Vessel, which when I heard that that was the song he was going to sing, I said, well, then uh, I have to show the video.
We're going to Samaria. He said, say what? You don't do that. Do you not? It's, it, no, but we need to go this way. And he goes, nope. We're going to Samaria. So you can already see the disciples had just kind of started following Jesus. And he was just shaking everything up. And now he just asked him to do the one thing you don't do. And when he goes, he goes at a specific time of day. It's in the afternoon. And he sends the disciples off to go get food. Now he knew why he was there at that time of day. Because there was a certain woman that could not come in the morning when it was cool to gather water. No, because she was shunned, she was an outcast, she was considered the worst of the worst. And so she had to come by herself at the worst time of day in the afternoon to get her water. And as Jesus is sitting there, he asked her for a drink. Now that's something you don't do because a man would not ask, would not even talk to a woman, let alone a Samaritan woman let alone to ask her for a drink. Now, did you notice there were a couple, like, ladles there. He could have gotten his own water. So she's confused already. Why are you asking me for a drink? I'm a woman. And then she goes, you're a Jew, so why are you really asking me? Aren't I a defiled vessel to you? I don't know if that spot just hit you in the heart like it did me. We've probably all been there, right? Next to Christ, we are all defiled vessels. And yet, he sought her out. He came to where she was at. He didn't wait for somebody to go to the mountain where the temple used to be. No, he met her right in that moment, in her anguish and her despair. And he starts talking to her about the living water. And I gotta love that spot because she goes, Are you better than Jacob, our father Jacob, who built this well? And what does he say? I know Jacob. <laughs> First of all, he's the Messiah. And then he goes on, she says, Prove it. He says, Well, you've had five husbands, and the one you're living with now is not your husband. I love that old. <laughs> I perceive you must be a prophet. <laughs> right? She's trying to grasp this. Why are you talking to me? Why are you meeting me here out of all the people? And then she gets into this whole conversation about mountains, right? <laughs> we know you don't like us, but that's the whole thing. You, have, you just say you're not, your temple's on Jerusalem, and we say our temple's on Mount Gazaria. And, and even if I wanted to praise God, I'm not allowed. And then he says something the most profound. He says, there's coming a time when you're not going to worship on either mountain, in either temple. It's through the Spirit. It's from the heart. God is Spirit. And through that whole interaction, you can see that things are working, but she's still not quite convinced. Let me ask you. You're looking at this from 2,000 years post-Christ. You're looking at this as knowing the scriptures. You're looking at this of knowing Jesus' death and resurrection. What if you were that woman that day, at that well, when none of this has happened yet? Would you have believed him? When he says, if you had known who you are asking, I would have given you living water. She's not grasping that whole living water thing. Well, if you got living water, why are you asking me for a drink? That would have been my comment, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah? And I would have been her. Prove it to me if you are the Messiah. And he doesn't just rattle off names, but specifics. Things that nobody else could know. The scent of oranges. Only the Messiah could know that. What I love so much about what they did that you lose when you're just reading the words on paper is the emotional interaction. When he says, I am he, I am the Messiah that you've talked about, she looks up at him and there's that moment. 
It is that same moment that each of those disciples felt when they looked into his eyes. It is that same moment that turns somebody from a wayward sinful path to a path of redemption. She felt it. God allowed the Spirit to move in her and to open up her spiritual eyes and she knew beyond a shadow of a doubt so much as she dropped her water. Right? And she says, you are the Christ. I must tell everybody. And what does Jesus say? I was counting on that. Did you notice before that line he said, you're the first person I've revealed this to that wasn't a Jew. It would be good if you believed me. <laughs> I want that to settle in. Besides his disciples, the first person that he allowed his deity to be known to was a Samaritan, the worst of the worst. <laughs> the place you did not go, he went. The person you did not talk to, he talked to. And he offered her eternal life. That's the Messiah we worship. That's the Messiah we claim to know is the one who meets us right where we're at. Even if it's the hottest part of our life. Even if it's the ickiest moment. Even if what we've done is nothing to be proud of. He meets us right there. Defiled vessel and all. Broken vessels. And he offers his living water for all, no matter where. Free or slave, Gentile or Jew, man or woman, young or old, it does not matter because the Messiah came to offer his spirit so that way we can worship, not in the temple, but in spirit to the one who has given us the greatest gift of all, eternal life. Amen. As we come to our time of prayers, um, I would ask if there are those that we want to lift up. Karen, we'll continue to pray for you. We want to continue to pray for Marcus as we hopefully find something out on Tuesday. Yes. So Roberta's niece uh, is having, Ashley, is having uh, surgery for throat cancer that they found. So, and what day was that again? Uh, I think it's the 27th. The 27th, something like that. Uh, for those of you who kept John in your prayer, thank you. We did get to go to Madonna. It was an evaluation for the evaluations. But he is um, sending him up to uh, med center with a different neurologist. And then two days worth of more evaluations, so maybe we can figure something out. Okay. Yes? Um, my co-worker, Jen, that we prayed for at the beginning of her cancer treatment, she's finished the first treatment for chemo, and she has her surgery on Thursday. So if we could just have her okay. in prayer for the surgery so portion. Jen's got surgery coming up, and she's gone through her chemo yeah. treatment. Okay. And so then after that, she'll still have radiation. So... Step two. We'll Step two. Thursday. Okay. And God is good all of the time. He answers prayers. So my friend Patty that we put on the prayer list, everything just went ding, 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 and went right up. So it was just a matter of waiting and being patient. And uh, same with us. We actually signed the papers on the house down in Dunbar. It's not like right away, but um, it's it will happen. It's, it's purchased. It's just a matter of waiting more time, but that's okay. I can go... <laughs> if you bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today and our hearts are full. There are so many on our hearts and minds that we have been lifting up in prayer and we have been praying steadfastly for. Those that are struggling with health issues, those who have upcoming surgeries that are pending, those who have been fighting cancer, those who have just lost loved ones and the whole is still so real and fresh. Dear Lord, 
we thank you that you are good. You are good in those times when we don't understand it. You're good in the times that bad things happen. And you are good in the times that you answer prayer, that it lines up in your timing and in your way. We thank you for allowing us to just be a part, a little tiny part, of your greater ministry. We thank you that we are 2,000 years beyond Jesus' being on gracing the planet. And we can look at it through eyes of knowing the truth, knowing what happened. And just like that woman, being able to run out and tell everybody about the living water that only you can give and the gift of salvation that only comes in and through you. We thank you for all these mighty acts. And we thank you that on those days when we may be sitting in the heat of the sun and we have no words left on our tongues to say, that we can still lift our voices up in prayer to you anytime and anywhere, and that you gave us a prayer that we can pray to you. If you would join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we come to Christ's feast, it is open to all. And all are encouraged to come just as you are. Broken vessel, empty vessel, filled with the spirit vessel. To sit with the Messiah who had made himself known. That night, he sat with his disciples. He lifted up that middle piece. He gave thanks. He blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is now my body, which is broken for you. Every time you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. And then he picked up, not just any cup, but the third cup, the cup of salvation. And as he gave thanks and he blessed it and lifted it up, he said, this is now going to be a new covenant, a covenant between myself and you. It's going to be my blood, which will be poured out for the forgiveness of all sin. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so as the body of Christ, we come before his table, eating and drinking, celebrating and remembering his death, his resurrection, but most importantly, proclaiming his living water to all that listen. If you would join with me in our next hymn in the bulletin, we're going to do the first and third verse. It's because he lives.
Father, we praise your name and give you thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We come to this table to eat this broken bread, which calls us to remember that Christ's body was broken in order that our brokenness might be healed and our sins forgiven. As we receive the bread, we pray for the healing and the forgiveness that can come to each of us as we submit our lives to him. We thank you, Lord, this morning for uniting us, this family, in the body of Christ through this sacred meal. As this at this table, we find hope and joy for our daily lives. As we take this cup, may we renew our promise to look with compassion on the needs of others around us and to be active in your service to bring your kingdom here on earth. In your risen Son's name we pray. Amen. Tell them. 